with 69th Base. I am Doug Miller. This is the podcast where I rip on Skip, Bayless, and other sports pundits that are so stupid. This week, we're going to have fun looking back at all the people that are backpedaling on Dak Prescott all of a sudden. What? Is that really happening? Yes, it is. Also, Skip has some outlandish claims. Can you believe it? Like, Aaron Donald is overrated? What the fuck is he talking about? And, of course, we're going to address one Drip Bayless. Good God, what is happening right now? Um, We're going to get to much more. We're also going to have an exclusive clip from that interview from Skip Bayless's former employee. So, get ready. Some more juicy stuff coming. I also have another classic Doug story that features alcohol and police officers, uh, which is where most of my stories go. I've also got Mike Years back on the podcast, along with a, a lifelong friend of mine. Uh, I've known him since the third grade. He knows me almost better than I know myself. Uh, we're both Cowboys fans, and we defer when it comes to Dak Prescott a little bit. But before we jump in, I got to tell this story about, oh boy, guys. One time I was performing at a festival called Fun 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 Fest, where I was telling jokes also happen to have a lot of great live music. Always the best time. Such a great time every year. But every time I performed at it, I would party a little bit too much. It was easy to get in a little bit of trouble there. And at one point, um, I'm just going to say it. I had done too many things to my body over the entire weekend. And it just came to a point where I had to go use the porta potty which I'm not fond of. Who wants to go use the porta potty at a music festival? No one. It's the worst. But I had to do it because sometimes you just got to do it. I really had a shit. Uh, but I didn't quite make it to the porta potty. I made it just outside. And uh, I shit my pants. I shit my pants. And there was a little, what I would call a ball of shit. They just rolled down my pant leg. It's wearing jeans. And it just kind of emptied onto the ground. And it was the most disturbing, disgusting thing I'd seen from myself and as, as an adult. Like, I, you ever surprise yourself as an adult? You're like, ah, oh, that's never happened before. And it, it shouldn't. Well, that happened. That little ball of shit just rolled right out of my leg and onto the ground. And... Guys, Skip Bayless is that piece of shit that rolled on the ground, you know? I'd honestly rather have that happen again every day as opposed to having to listen to Skip Bayless, you know, talk about Tom Brady for 30 seconds. And that's the truth. And here we are. Let's get into it. Here we go. All right, I'm pleased to welcome to the show, uh, we got my boy Mikey, who... Uh, never been here before. Never been here before. Uh, runs the audio. You heard him last week. You've heard him before. All around good dude. And uh, never been on the podcast before. Uh, very special treat. Uh, excited to bring him on because he's known me almost as long as my mother uh everybody welcome jason knuckles thank you thank you for having me i'm 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 flattered to be here this is great this is gonna be a good show that'll be fun to have you on since you've known me since what the third grade yes sir third grade good god third grade and we've pretty much talked about sports like every day (laughs) yeah yeah you send me some pretty both you and mikey or on the memes, like the funniest fucking... I, that's, that's the main way I connect now. I, <laughs> yeah. I figure out what happened. I don't have a TV. We li- I've, I've we lost li- a lot of friends that don't understand my <laughs> memes, too. I'm like, go fuck yourself if you don't like that. <laughs> we live in a meme world. Well, I, 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 memes is a source of news for me. I figure out who won and lost based on, <laughs> yeah. on the memes a that joke. are going around, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, I, then if it looks like something dramatic happened... I'll... Russian collusion memes, that's all. That's the only way I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, so... Because we've known each other for so long, that means you grew up in Dallas with me. Mm-hmm. That means you're a Cowboys fan. Right, right, you're right. on the good side. Yeah. <laughs> you also, I think, though, are, are recognize you're a realistic fan, like I am. Like we're on this in the same boat of we're not like 
I'm we're going to win the Super Bowl right. every year. I don't year. blindly believe that the Cowboys are going to do well all the time. Like, right. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I, I see their mistake. I, I, I see them like a child. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm frustrated by them. I want them to do better. I see their weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which we saw the last two weeks. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like having a, a, a B student when we know they could be an A student. We yeah, know, I know, yeah, I know yeah. the Cowboys have talent. I can yeah. see the talent. But I see the potential, the squandered Yeah. You know, and, we, you know, we were texting after this past game and the game before just like mm-hmm. what the fuck is this but we all also both kind of half expected it right like uh you know we're just realists and also uh jason uh we, we haven't talked about it on here but you you don't seem to be a huge fan of skip bayless and all these goons no. yeah i'm not as familiar with the, the world of, like talking heads sports commentators as i as i should be i try like when I Google something, a game or something, or to hear an analysis, I usually click through to like that city's local paper and like read yeah, articles yeah, yeah. that way. So I don't follow a lot of the guys on next TV. Like I said, I don't, I don't have a TV, but I do know Skip Bayless from like social media and the posts he does <laughs> yeah, with his yeah. shoes. Yeah. And I know that his wife has a book out now. I, I, so I kind of know the, the world of Skip Bayless may, maybe more than like oh, his. You've sent me, you've given me a heads up on some of the worst posts by him. It's great. Yeah, he's, oh, thank you. He's a real <laughs> shitbag. I'm yeah. flattered. I do follow my I follow him on social media. I, 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 unfollow. Unfollow. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, he, he, there's, there's a void in this world that Skip Bayless fills, I guess, you know, old men in their shoes. A very, <laughs> very small void. Well, before we jump in, and um, I'm just going to share a story with you. I I don't know if you know this story. And it's a hard one. It's a hard thing to get a story by you. A, your memory is fucking incredible. Uh, I was trying to say uncanny incredible at the same time. I said incredible. So tell me if you've, you've heard this before. Uh, but either way, react. Uh, when I was working at the shoe store that I worked at, Legs Diamond in Austin, mm-hmm. Texas, for years and years, I while I was working there one time, I got really drunk one night, went Strange. to party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> went to party somewhere down the street. There's a lot of trouble to get into. This is like across from the University of Texas. On the drag. On the drag, they call right. it on Guadalupe. Guadalupe, whichever, whichever, whichever way you Guad- want to say Guadalupe? it. Guadalupe? Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I got in a lot of trouble that night. Probably went to the bar called The Hole in the Wall. Drank too much. And then I got back, back to the shoe store. And I panicked because my car was missing. Mm -hmm. And so I very drunkenly called the cops from my place of business. I was like the manager of that shoe store. I called the cops, very panicked, and I report my car stolen. And I'm just lit up. I should not be talking to a police officer. Mm. They come to the store. Even on foot at this point. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. Like, because I can get a public intoxication or whatever. So they come to the shoe store after hours. Like, I have a key, so I'm just hanging out, just wasted. And uh, they, you know, they ask me all these questions. And I'm like, it was fucking stolen. I'm so freaked out. And the whole time they're looking me over like, it wasn't stolen. You're wasted. Shut the fuck up. And they're like, is there any place you could have, you know, been to and you just forgot? I was like, what the? I was insulted. I was so mad at these fucking cops. And nobody likes talking to police officers. Uh, And then a long story short, I had just eaten at Kirby Lane. Uh, which is like you can, I got pancakes there, and which I should not have driven to if I was drunk. So I drove like f- two blocks and ate pancakes, and then just forgot that I left my car there. Um, but they told me like just sleep it off and then report it again if it's if if you find that yeah. it's missing in the morning we'll take it seriously. And I was so mad. And then sure enough, I slept at the shoe store because it was like 4 a.m. They may or may not have told me that uh, if I left, I would be in some trouble from drinking. So I basically yeah. like had to just hide out at the shoe store, <laughs> sober up. <clears throat> and uh, I woke up around like 4 or 6 a.m. or something. And just like a light bulb went off. And I was like, oh, I fucking ate at that place. I ran back, got my car. A few days later, uh, those cops show back up and they're like, hey, uh. 
did you find your car? <laughs> and they were like laughing. And I was like, ah, yeah, I, I did. And they were actually like pretty cool about it. They were like, so where was it? And I was like, uh, is it uh, Kirby Lane? And they were like, yeah, we saw you run to your car <laughs> and get it and drive off. Because I was so excited once I realized, once the light bulb went off, I sprinted and was just so elated that it wasn't stolen. So they were waiting outside for you for hours? They were eating at the oh, fucking okay. place okay. like well, a few yeah. hours later. That's hilarious, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they like, that's or funny. were just on duty. I was like, that's some good police work if they're just <laughs> yeah, waiting for yeah. you to go <laughs> drunk drive. But uh, yeah, so I guess I guess in summation, I'm an I'm an idiot. Well, last um, week it was a story about you being a really good employee chasing down uh, oh, yeah. someone who stole a photograph from a pharmacy. This <laughs> week it's about you being a shit employee. And long story short, I'm an idiot. All right, moving on to fucking one Skip Bayless, uh, guys. Uh, we have to kick it off with. This whole uh, Drip Bayless fiasco. Are you guys familiar with uh, Skip's new alter ego, Drip Bayless? Is it just based on the one chain? Just yeah, I, got I one chain so. that, think, that that gets the title Drip. I like, guess so. Yeah, like I think I think people have jokingly called him that because it rhymes. Maybe I got gotcha. you. I don't know exactly where that. Yeah, all to is. me, that means you're just like you know covered up and 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 accessories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He has the one dripping. chain, which. From Lil Wayne, I'm sure it's legit. Yeah. But at the same time... It's a fabulous chain. To have a 114-year-old man... It's, it's, it's a slow drip. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Slow drip, Bayless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> slow drip or having to get up in the middle of the night several times a night drip, uh, Bayless. Kind uh, of a percolator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... Uh, he is just, he's really milking this fucking thing. It's Snoop Dogg was on the program... Uh, I'm saying program because that's what Skip Bayless would call his show. Uh, you know, you got to watch your programs when you're in 100. the right time slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Snoop Dogg was on, and I think he may have brought these T-shirts and sang a song and mentioned Drip Bayless. So now he already had Lil Wayne, you know, with the chain and all that, and he thinks they're best friends. Now he thinks Snoop Dogg is his best friend, probably, and now he's just really building this up as this persona and it's i you know i think most of the people online probably are being very sarcastic mm -hmm. and just think it's so ridiculous right but i yeah. love that it's just going to his head and he's just uh you got to be into the drip bayless lifestyle with irony yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 nobody's into it with like wholeheartedness Doug yeah. texted me this photo i've been having nightmares of, of him with his little fedora on wearing his drip shirt yeah he's uh yeah the ig post if you haven't seen it yet go to instagram he's wearing one of the drip bayless t-shirts uh it's a ridiculous t-shirt they had a contest where you could um have a headline that wins a t-shirt or whatever based off the Cowboys Green Bay game. Anyway, um, he was also wearing, yeah, that fedora, and he looked insane. He, he looks like... It, it really looks like he's making fun of himself, and he doesn't know it, and that's the best part, I think. I don't care for the fedora just because... It looks like the kind of hat that really wouldn't block the sun in any capacity because the <laughs> brim is really, really narrow. Yeah. So it's it's just for looks. It's just kind of like a backwards visor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's useless. <laughs> like the John Gruden special, you know. Right. 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 And but that he's already. I think he's ex what was happening is he's exhausted his shoe collection. <laughs> because he's already he's done so many shoes. That's what I see. Yeah, right. he posts on his Instagram. Every right. other post is, look at my new Jordans. Right, his shoes. So what do you do when you run out of shoes? You, you, you start wearing hats. You start doing hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, I think Snoop maybe gave him that hat. Uh -huh. So he's showing off his hat. He's showing off his chain. <laughs> that hat, though, really makes him look like, uh, you know, that like, like ska music and like the... It's like a ska leprechaun. Uh, big band, yeah. <laughs> big band music got really big in the late nineties. Yeah. yeah. If he looks like a teenager, <laughs> right? Trying to make that comeback. He's like the oldest person at the Squirrel Nut Zippers concert. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just took his jinkos in to trade him for that fedora. <laughs> All right. Uh, of course, Skip Bayless loves to talk about his favorite subject, the Dallas Cowboys, which happens to be Jason and I's favorite team. Um, but he sees things a little bit differently. Um, but I'll just say it was fun this week. 
Well, Jason and I have been on different sides of Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. But um, not literally. <laughs> well, there was that uh, one time. Except for that one night. <laughs> but uh, That was before he was on the Cowboys, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you've been a big advocate of Dak. I've I been have. a Tony Romo guy. Um, how are you like feeling? Because I, I guess where we're venturing into right now, it's really funny to me watching so many people backpedal on Dak Prescott all of a sudden. I, I, I like Dak Prescott. I think he's better than Tony Romo. That's the origin of, of why I like Dak Prescott. I thought Tony Romo wasn't going to ever put a ring on, on, on the finger. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. He's never going to be a Super Bowl winner. Like I, you, can look, you can look at the guy and see that Tony Romo is not a Super Bowl winner. Um, Jack Prescott looked more like a guy that could lead a team uh, to a championship. He 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 was a more uh, aggressive player. I think he he made passes that mattered. And Tony Romo, always in the clutch, would I thought you know? Oh no, up. Tony was way more aggressive. That's what I liked about him. Yeah, you, you but, but, but but he was a risk taker, like you say. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But that only counts in life if your risks work out. Like yeah. he was a risk taker that that didn't land the passes he needed to land to to win games. You right. know, he took risks that that didn't work <laughs> out. I, I, Dak I, took some risks this weekend, and yeah, and they didn't work out either. <laughs> but I I, st- I stick. I mean, like I gotta like the guy just because I think he's a. a a good person for the team. I, I, I kind of always felt like that about Quincy Carter. I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like what a perfect no, fit. We're both huge Quincy Carter fans. <laughs> 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 no, my whole thing with Tony's, I felt like yeah. he just never, he had two really good teams, really one great team. And he took them up to the Des catch, non catch, mm-hmm. which would have got us in the championship. But there was that weird call, which, was just a fucking nightmare. So it's like the one time he did have a great team, he kind of got us in the championship, yeah. and we'll never know that what happened. That was the game against the Packers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember that. Guys. And it's weird. It was so frustrating because I was watching with my friend Jim Hamilton, a really funny comic, and he's a Packers fan. Mm. And as soon as it happened, I thought we were good to go. Yeah, and I was like, I, we're moving it was so on. So obvious to me that it was a legit catch. Yeah, and then he turned around. And he's like, well, actually, the rule is, and he explained it. And I was like, oh, we're fucked. And it sucks because it's such a dumb thing, yeah. but the rule's a fucking rule, and it's like... And the game before, we had a shitty thing that against the Lions that went the other way, so it was like... Right. felt like a weird karmic thing, but anyway, I just felt like Tony, the one year we had everything working, he almost got, got us the championship, and he got fucked by that call, Okay, and then we would have maybe gone to the Super Bowl, but we'll never know because that was the one team he had, which still isn't as good as... The three teams Dax had, mm-hmm. and Dax just kind of, you know, Dax kind of had these seriously what feels like perfect, perfect teams where uh, all first round offensive linemen running back. Uh, How do you think their defense looks, though? I thought like that game was lost yeah, as much yeah, yeah. on the defense no, side. Yeah. What's weird is, man, that must be on Garrett because. Our defense should be fucking great in my head. I don't know. Like yeah, it feels I mean, like yeah, exactly. Have, yeah, yeah. Last but, season, but it Romo seems didn't have like a lot of that, right? And that's why Romo was destroyed physically. Mm-hmm. Was because I felt like he was just like I'm just gonna win every game by myself, and that's why he did take these dumb chances on occasion. I, I, I meet very few Cowboys fans though that had a big problem with Tony Romo. I feel like he's pretty like unanimously loved. Yeah, he's well liked. Like, nah, nah, he's, he's kind of a lightning rod. It's, well, it's like no one. Obviously, everyone's kind of upset that like he never accomplished more. Yeah, it's but, just like, because he didn't win a ring, people shit on him. But he's very charismatic know. though, and I feel like that just like translates well. You to, like those the Corona ads? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, getting back on track. Okay, we've gone way off. Um, th- watching people backpedal on deck. Mm-hmm has been very entertaining to me. Um, I like Dak. I don't love Dak. What you're saying is the broadcasters were like all about him, and then now that he's had two bad weeks in a row, they throw him under the bus. And Well, play. yeah, Colin Cowherd was very supportive of Dak Prescott, and basically he now is saying, he at least admitted he was wrong. He's now saying, I fucked up, Dak's not as good as I thought he was. And then Jason Whitlock, who is the biggest fucking tool, uh, he was saying as of today 
Uh, if you put him against easy competition, he looks great. But with tough competition, he needs Zeke. Um, and Shannon Sharp also pointed out, uh, I think it was some weird statistic where if Zeke Elliott gets 75 yards or more, Dak uh, dominates. But if Zeke gets under the hat, he's like one and nine or something, which is the whole thing I've been saying is like we need Zeke. Yeah. Like Zeke, I don't think, I think Zeke his analysis guy. was the first one you mentioned is they said if he needs Zeke. The whole team needs Zeke. It's not just Dak Prescott that yeah, but from Dak, having. that Well, that's like what I was saying about Romo. Like Romo could just win games running game or no running game uh-huh. Dak like has to have everything clicking mm-hmm. and, and being perfect he's got to have that distraction and yeah yeah, and, he's Zeke, got, yeah. <laughs> and that check down guy and Zeke yeah you know? yeah but uh Whitlock went on to say that the first three games are not who Dak Prescott is so he's saying these last two games are who he is and he also said you just can't pay him right now but let's go back two weeks he was saying Dak should name his price and get whatever money he wants. So he flipped like that. And that's what I find so fucking entertaining. And he also said Dak, at that point, Dak is never going to come back down to earth. Like he's always going to be this fucking good. And now he's saying he sucks. And I'm, even though I haven't been super hot on Dak, I still think there's a possibility. I think he's shown some things where he can be better. Yes. And like, I think he's somewhere in the middle but I think he's shown a little bit of growth. It's just I, I just think it's so funny when these guys just immediately like are do like. You know, do you know what ballpark they're talking about? Is about paying him? Do you know what he's asked? I think to? Dak wants forty million. That's not happening. I mean, not not after the two weeks they just had. I mean, I hope not. I thought he was supposed to like renegotiate after uh, week three. Yeah, that's, that would have been that would have been a much better move for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I kind of thought. What the plan was. That's what I, I was so glad we did not do that because uh, the whole time I was like, "Don't, please I like take that you a say fucking." We meaning you and yeah, Jerry Jones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, which is what we. Skip and all those guys do, yeah. but like everybody was saying, like uh, Jerry Jones was saying, like uh, basically, like we're gonna just dump all the money on him, and uh, he was all excited about it, like too excited. And then immediately things change. I, I was all I've talked about it on the podcast. I think we should just why don't we play the whole fucking season out? If he wins the Super Bowl, give him all the fucking money in the world. Right. But until then, why not fucking dangle that carrot over him? Fucking motivate the shit out of him. Like why? Do you think that's interrupting his psyche? Do you think that, that he can't play under the stress of knowing that he's you know being examined right now for what? Either way, he's a millionaire. <laughs> like, right. Right. It's yeah. a matter of a few million dollars. It's like twenty three with at least twenty million dollars. Yeah, in his he'll, he'll at he'll least get thirty million. So there's a ten million dollar difference, but he's also got all these endorsements. Like, who gives a shit? Like, buck up and fucking play. But right. I, I just, <laughs> I just loved watching everybody back down a little bit mm-hmm. because I, I don't know. Like, wh- why put yourself so far out on a limb? Either way, why can't they just treat him like a normal player? Everybody's got to like you know kiss that person's ass that week you know like they, 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 it's always like a quarterback or some running back or a wide receiver that like has like a stellar string of weeks and everyone like is like all about that person and then they have a couple of weeks for their shit yeah and you have to go back and you're, you're in you're in a bad position if you're skip bayless or someone like that because then you do look like an idiot because you yeah, did yeah, say yeah. we're so you know so the whole, positive the whole thing is like they're all just normal people these are all <laughs> just me they're all just we're all just shades of gray we're all none right. you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> all of our talent just fucking let it play out like it's just it's funny watching uh skip and uh will kane while Whitlock and Colin Cowherd are abandoning ship, uh, Skip and Will Kane are doubling down, mm-hmm. and all are wrong. Like, right. yeah, just see where this is going, yeah, and then let it play out. Like, and I know they have to be dramatic for what they're mm-hmm. doing, but you also uh, Will Kane posted a video today. His show is not going on right now because of uh, World Series ba- or uh, playoff ba- baseball. He's the playoff. one you really hate, right? You hate that guy. Oh, he's the worst, just because he seems the most evil. Skip's the funniest to pick on, <laughs> but Will Kane just seems like a outright evil KKK guy. member. Yeah, yeah, pro- yeah, possible KKK member. So Will Kane didn't have a show today, but he decided he had to defend Dak. So he posted this video where he's just like. Mm-hmm. All of you guys coming at me, the Dak Prescott sucks, and he's just a game manager. 
Uh, don't come back at me when he's winning football games and he wins the Super Bowl and he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And the whole time he's like changing uh, camera angles to look more intimidating. And it's kind of creepy. Like it's he's like changing body posture. He's like leaning yeah, yeah. into the camera. And yeah. yeah, he starts out like leaning back into his couch and then he turns to where he's hovering over the it's really kind of like it's a real this don guy, draper kind of yeah kinda power, this, power this power guy in real thing. life is a fucking nightmare and i want to get in the psyche of these guys and we'll get in a skip a little bit later but uh i just thought it was so funny that again he's just doubling down when skip bayless and will kane last year gave up on Dak before we got amari and we're like oh Dak sucks and then the next week oh Dak's the best i just think it's so crazy that these guys will go so far out on a limb and just like defend someone so now they're doubling back down again so if Dak is if this is the rest of his season if he yeah. doesn't fucking recover they look so fucking they stupid look bad, you know? right. like What's it's crazy just, is like these guys are getting paid and they're probably not doing any better job than we are at talking about <laughs> yeah, sports. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no that's why we're, we're killing it. Yeah. Right, right. We're, we're, we're <laughs> years ahead because we see the reality. The truth is these are all just human beings that are all trying to like to like be as stellar as you think they are, but they're not. They're yeah. not. They're just people. And we don't. Yeah. Have, we don't just have a wild ego. It's yeah. It's just gotten out of control. Like he, Skip Bayless even said. He would take Dak Prescott over Russell Wilson, which is just fucking ridiculous. No, I like Dak Prescott, but that is crazy. I would that's, take Russell that's Wilson That's really over dumb, Dak yeah. yeah. Uh, they, it, like, I started this podcast out this year where I was saying I would take so many more quarterbacks over Dak. I've definitely shaved off like two or three to where it's like, all right, hmm. I don't want Andy Dalton over Dak Prescott. No, I wouldn't yeah. take Andy Dalton because yeah, yeah. he's a redhead. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's never going to be a redhead that wins a, a Super Bowl ring as a quarterback. It's not going to happen. I don't know, man. They got so much rage inside them. <laughs> <laughs> and allegedly, they have night vision, which may or may not help. <laughs> well, that could help. Yeah. The, the, like the Baltimore... San Francisco Super Bowl with the lights get cut out? Right. Fucking, you want Andy <laughs> he Dalton, Dalton in he that keeps going. game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Same subject-ish, but not. Uh, Skip Bayless uh, says that Dak Prescott is the most over-criticized quarterback of all time. He's said this repeatedly, and that is fucking laughable mm -hmm. because even we've been on different sides of Tony Romo, which means Tony Romo is also a fucking lightning rod. Right. Any Cowboys quarterback is going to be a fucking lightning rod. Mm -hmm. But uh, both those guys aside, uh, Donovan McNabb, uh, he took some shit. Uh, Michael Vick, he he had some yes, he was things going on. Right, right. Um, <laughs> Joe Flacco, even maybe like Michael Vick. Uh, there was some scandal involved with him. Yeah, right? there was something that happened. <laughs> yeah. I don't know exactly what it was. Tom Brady he, deflated those. He like footballs. didn't have a license to sell puppies. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Tom Brady. Tom Brady uh, the, threw the deflated football. Well, he, yeah. a million fucking scandals and shit. Like, uh -huh. and that the, that's his boy. So the he taping want. of the practices, the and deflated footballs. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, They're leaving his girlfriend when she was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. There's that's, that's a bad one. <laughs> there's some criticism. I mean, there. who isn't guilty of that though? Am I right? All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Brett Favre. He had some dick pics, some other things. People didn't like him. Ro uh, what was his name? Roethlisberger. Oh god. Oh yeah. There Roethlisberger has been. I mean, that's apart. that's like that's taking it to another level of criticism. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's an accusation we won't, we won't dip into cam newton uh oh colin kaepernick uh mm -hmm. <laughs> you think maybe he's been a little right, bit more right criticized. that's a good example warren yeah. moon uh back in the 80s there weren't a lot of black quarterbacks i think he maybe took some shit in his day yeah jay cutler i he's hate the, jay uh, yeah. cutler though he's the uh vaxxer right the the anti-vaxxer Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Jay Christ. Cutler, like I think I would. I, I don't know. Let me let me Google it before I say <laughs> it. But I think Jay Cutler is like on the anti-vax kick, and he's taking a lot of shit in the press <laughs> for that. Sorry if y'all can hear some steel banging on the ground. Uh, there seems to be some sort of uh, rogue maniac just banging like a, steel a biker, poles together. Like a biker gang. Or <laughs> it's yeah. one. Of, it's one of those groups of homeless people that walk around uh, having sword fights with metal <laughs> poles. 
Yeah. It's probably uh, Donovan McNabb. It's Skip Bayless coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the Warriors in the back. <laughs> just like. uh, point is, I think some uh, quarterbacks have been more criticized than easily. Like it, it, Skip just always lives in a vacuum of like, mm-hmm. what's happening right now is the most important thing of all time in human history. Mm-hmm. And in his head, it's all about the Cowboys. So it's Dak, whatever. He's just a fucking idiot. We know this. Um, Moving on, another really dumb, shitty Skip Bayless opinion. Aaron Donald is overrated. That's a thing that uh, Skip Bayless seems to think. He continually says that Aaron Donald uh, does not jump off the screen to him. He seems to not serve any purpose. To I Skip mean, that Bayless. guy can't even pick up an SUV on his own. You know, <laughs> what a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah, that guy. That's he can just... only pick up a mid-sized car. <laughs> what percentage of the football players on Sunday are jumping off the screen at Skip Bayless? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I think Skip probably is not good at watching tape. Uh, you know, when you're watching a football game, you see the guy with the ball, usually the quarterback, mm. starts with the center, goes to the quarterback, then the quarterback does something with it, either gives it to the running back or throws it to a receiver. So probably in Skip's eyes, he's like, those are the guys that jump off screen to me. Right, right. Those guys on defense, unless they touch that ball, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. care about them. Yeah. And Aaron Donald, you know, plays a position that doesn't normally get a billion sacks, but he did that. And I think the only reason Skip Bayless is upset about this is because he was ranked number one in a poll by the players mm-hmm. as the number one player in the NFL, which should not be taken lightly, especially when your peers are voting you yeah. right. like this. And he was just upset because it wasn't Tom Brady or Dak Prescott. Yeah, defensive tackle is an it's a faceless position. It's an overlooked yeah, position. Yeah. It's like the, the 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 drummer or something, or rock band, you yeah. know. <laughs> and and it just to me, it's like Skip Skip Bayless's lack of like really watching the game. You know, I mean, all he sees are like the superstars, and those are the ones that jump off the screen at him. He's then, just, like, then like ninety percent of the people on the screen are not jumping off. Right, right. You know, so yeah, I think it's just him being a brat that like my guy's not number one. Yeah, like he has names written down of people he spoke about the day before, and if those names don't come up, then yeah, then he's gonna throw right. a fucking shit fit. Yeah, he's gonna have a little t- a little. It's a little temper tantrum. It's gotta be fun to be approaching your seventies and you just behave that way. Oh god, is that how old he is? Sixty seven, yeah. Wow. Doesn't he look older though? I really feel like he looks older. Yeah, he's like a smoker sixty seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like so healthy, it's ridiculous. Uh speaking of being old, he also says uh he was hoping the Rams he picked the Rams in the Ram Seahawks game and the Seahawks won. And he said they shouldn't have uh, because of the field goal that was missed by the Rams. Mm. He says, uh, bottom line, kicking is too gimmicky. What does that mean? <laughs> to me, I, gimmicky is like if a shitty song has like a chorus that is really, really like memorable and shallow and people sing that, that's a gimmicky song. Right? How yeah. can it be gimmicky? What does the kicker do that's gimmicky? What, make, I, make field he's goals? He's just saying that like, uh, because they don't, catch the ball or tackle they shouldn't have anything to do with the outcome of the game which I this kinda, is american football yeah, this, isn't, yeah, this yeah. isn't football which, uh, uh. on a level i kind of understand that like yeah this like fucking guy that weighs 18 pounds shouldn't be the fucking guy that wins the game but at the same time it is what it is it's been there since day one Shut the fuck up. You sound like such an old man. You're like, it's too gimmicky, these men with the kicks. There's one thing I do hate about kickers, and that is kickers with a fucking ego. I hate Justin Tucker uh, <laughs> with a passion because like he has to he tries to have this swagger and he's like, I'm a kicker and I'm gonna I'm gonna be the new standard for kickers in the league. <laughs> Diving into Skip Bayless's psyche. Oh, this is fun. I, I feel like uh I, I, I try to pay as much attention to what these idiots say, particularly Skip Bayless, of course, and he let something slip that I found so hilarious. And this was in a, I guess Brett Favre was talking up Dak Prescott, and in this segment, had nothing to do with any of that. Skip Bayless randomly said something about when he was a child, they did not have Santa Claus at his house. (laughs) 
And really? I feel like that says so much about Skip Bayless. I feel like his dad would just beat him with a belt if he brought up Santa Claus. He's like, yeah, he's not I mean, real. Uh, he has talked <laughs> about he had an abusive alcoholic father. You pair that with uh, Santa Claus was not in the picture. You're just starting to piece together why this guy is. And that's, I, I don't want to say like, uh, this could go, oh, God damn it. I'm making myself sound real bad. Like, Skip had a rough past, but he's also 70 years old. The past was a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, the past yeah. is the past. You can grow and change and develop into... Also, after hearing that interview last week with his with his ex employee that you had on your show, like I have kind of I, I kind of have lost even more respect for him. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, like that's some dark stuff. That was some pretty fucked up stuff, and I think we're gonna hear more of that later. So Skip Bayless reveals that <laughs> he does not have Santa Claus in his home. Uh, he has a fucked up childhood. He didn't have Santa Claus. He also, I think, last week revealed that he didn't have party days. Or no, he said that he didn't have younger days. Oh, yeah. So I just feel like things are starting to add up to where painting this picture of Skip Bayless is just this exactly, I guess, what he is, which is a fucking living, walking nightmare. He's just a sun-dried tomato. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I love to uh, to hear from Skip is you can uh, there's a tell. He has a tell, which is uh, you can tell he's losing an argument. Or you can tell that he thinks he's losing an argument by the frustration in his voice. And also he starts to get louder. And on top of that, he'll start challenging Shannon Sharp, a Hall of Fame NFL player, to physical feats. Really? Yeah. It's, he's like done what, this. What, is, what has he challenged him It's to? always running because uh, apparently Skip fancies himself <laughs> as a runner. Really? Like long distance? And, uh, and he actually posts pictures on Instagram. Of him as a weightlifter, too. It's very unnerving. I mean, he looks like the 70 year old guy who runs like half marathons. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. He, he, he brags about that. He certainly does. Not full marathons, though. But in a, <laughs> yeah, in a, <laughs> he'd die. Yeah. But in a recent uh, show, out of nowhere, I don't know what they were talking about, somebody's speed or something, some player's running speed, Skip just fucking shouts out to sh- everybody that. In his heyday, his best marathon, he ran a 622 mile. And then he just shouts out, do you think you could do that right now? <laughs> I just think it's so fun to watch him shrink and just fucking degrade himself into this like, oh, yeah, well, I fucking ran a mile. <laughs> it's six minutes. In 1956. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Back in my day. And uh, it was brought up like in that segment. It was when he was in his 30s, Hmm. and Shannon's in his 50s now. So, like, that's not, that's a world of difference. I would still love it. They were measuring miles with stagecoach wheels. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I would (laughs) love it if Shannon was like, fuck it, let's do it. Oh, God, please let that happen. (laughs) Kick his ass. I'm sure Shannon would still destroy him. (laughs) And what's crazy is, you know, they're, like, I guess, like 15 years apart. But He's probably contractually obligated to back down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <you> probably. <laughs> he can't actually beat him. Yeah. And meanwhile, Shannon Sharp, like, posts pictures of him, like, benching 5,000 pounds. Oh, my God. Like, that, dude, that makes me feel so elephant. lazy. <laughs> makes <laughs> me feel so lazy. <laughs> but just, like, let... Why, why would you challenge Shannon Sharp to anything right, physically? Right. Well, why would he challenge anybody to anything? He's he's old. I mean, what, <laughs> at, at a certain age, you stop making challenges. You know but, what I mean? I'm, I'm near that age. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't challenge I people. I think to, he just gets so mad at these players like for being what he want, wanted to be. Mm-hmm. He clearly wanted to be an athlete. He, it didn't happen for him. And now he just has to shit all over LeBron James all the time. Yeah. Right. And anyone that's not LeBron or like Tom Brady or Michael Jordan. Uh, but it's just fun to put, again, putting these puzzle pieces together. It's real fun. I love his taste in players. It's like all the unanimously, unanimously voted great, the greatest athletes <laughs> of all time. Yeah. That's He's like, I'm a big game, Usain yeah. Bolt, Michael Jordan, <laughs> and Tom Brady fan. Yeah, as <laughs> uh, two biggest bandwagons are tom brady and michael jordan really going out on a limb there you know yeah like uh oh man that's really uh, bold really bold uh 
fan <laughs> fan right there. He he sees the un, like the the unsung hero of the team. You know what I mean? The underdog, the guy that's like crucial in the clutch. Another thing, Skip loves to fucking do. Oh, sorry, Mikey. I apologize. Your mother heard the podcast and said I should stop <laughs> swearing so much. So I'll take that back. I'm so sorry. I, my, she was very. She was deeply disturbed by the interview with Skip's old employee. Uh, she did not find that very amusing whatsoever. <laughs> oh well, she's not gonna like the end of this. I was uh, like, Mom, podcast. the truth hurts. You know. I was like, <laughs> uh, sometimes you just, you just got to hear it to know how these people operate. <laughs> And that's why I'm glad you're bringing this truth to the world, Doug. <laughs> yeah. You can't, like, not say fuck, I think, in some, in some references to Skip Bayless like this, because some things are just so fucking stupid that, <laughs> yeah. like, what, how else are you going to relate it's, that? Yeah. He's that fucking aggravating. Yeah. Right. What, uh, a, what a cunt. <laughs> can we say that <laughs> it's your mom yeah. uh, <laughs> whoa. whoa another thing that i find so funny on skip's program is you can another way you can tell that he knows he's losing an argument he starts to mock shannon's voice and he'll just he's one of those guys where he's like me 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 he'll just start <laughs> pretending to be shannon he's like you said that he Dak prescott is very good uh, he like, starts shaking his head frantically yeah he gets very animated yeah. like he'll beat the desk down uh. can you imagine <laughs> being opposite this guy that can fucking throw you out of a fucking stadium and just mocking his voice yeah. like i will say he has balls for sure like that is insane but like that's the way i used to win arguments in elementary school yeah exactly like he's he's With never like evolved kids, like yeah. it's insane right. like i think the lack of santa claus really fucked him up well shannon um, probably looks at him like oh what a cute little old man i could break him in half if i wanted to uh, well i think he just looks at that paycheck and he's like all right i'll just put up with this <laughs> shit talk about a dream job both those guys though yeah I mean, yeah yeah just saying to the, be wrong all that much and still get paid <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean how come i'm unemployed <laughs> <laughs> but with skip you know you have to fucking live with just being attacked all the time right and i still think again like i've mentioned this before his instagram he shows so much ego shirtless flexing all that look at my wife's car look at how nice it is <laughs> i don't think that he doesn't believe this stuff i think right. he really fucking i think he has too much ego to just get paid to say right the worst thing like i think he just He's a, a true delusion. believer, you're saying. He believes his own Kool-Aid. I, I think he so. He his own Kool-Aid, so or to speak. He's, yeah, I think uh, at least... I, I know he gets told, turn it up a notch, but... <laughs> how, how, him and Stephen A worked together for a long time. Did they just have like a falling out of Stephen A? Like, fuck this guy, I'm out? I think Skip just took more money. Really? Which is a thing that he shits on athletes for all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't want Dak Prescott to do. And yet he just fucking ran away and got the, the bigger check, so... yeah. Fuck that guy. Um, I don't like Stephen A either, but that's here nor there. Stephen A is a goofball. He's mm -hmm. he's better. He's, he's better than Skip, yeah, but like he's still dumb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's a lesser evil. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We're at a fun part. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the podcast where we get to start a rumor about Skip Bayless and just run with it. And uh, I'll go first. Um, I looked this up. It's actually legitimate. Skip Bayless had an affair with Ted Bundy when he was in prison and they hooked up multiple times and skip knows where some of the bodies that were off the record actually are well ted bundy he was a ring wearer so you know i th i've heard that that skip also i guess this is my rumor of the week skip skip likes uh heavily ringed fingers to be stuck in his butt oh yeah yeah because yeah. of tom brady well, that's, that's very that's verified also yeah, yeah yeah this was in the 80s so i think they probably allowed uh, guys in prison to wear rings. Yeah. So, yeah, that all checks out 100%. 100%. <laughs> it's um, all really happened. Also, my friend was at a barbecue recently. Skip showed up to this barbecue, uh, and I guess he doesn't eat. Um, he only eats all beef hot dogs, and they had beef and pork hot dogs together. So Skip fills – when he eats hot dogs, he fills up his buns with condiments, no meat, and just eats a condiment hot dog. Oh, it's that's weird. Fucked up. Guy needs to be put down. I feel like that has to be linked to the Ted Bundy thing. 
Like he picked up some weird survival skills. Yeah, like there's yeah. something like that's something a serial killer would do. Eat a right, hot dog right. with only condiments. Yeah, it's pretty I, weird. I, this is actually true because Skip Bayless, he lives in a building. All right, that's on the other side of the neighborhood that I, I live in, and the buildings share a management company. And I heard that this is on the security camera in the other building's lobby. Um, there was a day when the Spectrum was having free coupons put in everybody's mailbox, but it right. turns out Skip Bayless's neighbor got two of the coupons, you know what I mean, from Spectrum, and he got Skip's. Skip got none. And he threw a tantrum in the lobby of the building. He was taking people's mail and throwing it around and saying, where's my fucking coupon? He seems like a couponer. Right, right. Where's <laughs> yeah. my Spectrum deal? Where's my three-in-one bundle thing? Everybody's got one but me. He was pissed off. He was <laughs> slamming mailboxes, going through people's mail. It makes, it was, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, the, he's, uh, definitely, that definitely checks out because... As you said, he definitely seems like a coupon guy, and he seems he's got such an ego. Yeah, I think. I, I also I, I also heard that he wanted to get into acting, and he actually actively lobbied to get Joaquin Phoenix's job playing the Joker. Uh, but you know, he they didn't need to put makeup on him. He was too realistic. He was too oh, terrifying. Yeah. So they were like, they're also like, this is too close to home. Yeah. You're yeah. actually a psychopath. Exactly. Yeah. We can't have you playing yourself. You're not going to be any fun on set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to ask you uh, something real quick. Just out of nowhere. If you, if 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 there was an athlete that had to sleep with your wife, who would you? Let me let me let me rephrase this question okay, in, a, yeah, in a little but... bit dirtier way. If you were to pick one professional football player. Dead or alive, past or present, to fuck your wife, who would you pick? Can you pick a coach? Yeah. Tom Landry. <laughs> Why I, is that? I, no. I, I, fuck my dapper. wife. Fuck, fuck Courtney. Okay, he first he'd have to still be alive. He's dead now, right? But I no, make, no, yeah, I think alive or dead, right? Alive or dead. Yeah, just because I, I'd make him fuck her while he wears that hat and trench coat. Like yeah. some kind of like sick, <laughs> sick scene out of like, you know, like a, like a film noir kind of character, you know? <laughs> He's like this evil, like in the shadows, half concealed, half revealed <laughs> old man, you know? So I, I don't know. I guess that would be uh, more of a respect <laughs> thing. Like. No, for the cinematic <laughs> qualities. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I don't think either one of y'all can argue with my choice. Uh, I think either one of y'all would let my choice enter your wife as well, but Pat Tillman, because that guy's a fucking American hero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think okay. I could fuck my wife anytime he wants to. He was the one that's killed, right, in Af- Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah right. Friendly yeah. fire. Yeah. Sorry, it's not funny. Why are you funny. laughing about that? <laughs> it's not funny, but that just... Uh, that's Friendly fire is just the worst thing imaginable. Yeah. It's a stupid term, friendly fire. Uh, who would I pick? I would pick... O.J. Simpson, hear me out. The Naked Gun years, you know, he's he a was good-looking guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was at least eight years before he killed his wife. Or uh, Daryl Moose Johnston. <laughs> your really? wa- your wife is in the room next door. Yeah, because like, he the just fuck? he was a battering ram. You know, <laughs> she's gonna take it. You know, like his whole job was to just fucking ram it in there. Like Jerome Bettis? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, the bus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Take a ride on the bus. There's another good one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. Actually, actually, I'm thinking maybe like Matt Schaub, just because I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> you know? The guy probably needs a lay. <laughs> man, he's... No, I don't know, man. He is still playing football. Didn't he want to ring with uh, the like? Wasn't he on the like a backup quarterback for the Patriots or something? I wouldn't be surprised, but it's just crazy. Like he's he's still like an Atlanta or something, right? He, he's been around for eight. I know years. last season he was somewhere. I don't know if he's somewhere this year. <laughs> Guys, so stoked once again to bring to light another clip. Uh, for those of you that didn't hear last week's episode, last week we presented an interview. Uh, from a Skip Bayless former employee that stepped forward and had a lot to say about their time working with Skip, and it's, uh, it's it gets pretty dark. And this week uh, we've got another clip, and uh, 
Let's just see what happens. So, Je- oh God, sorry, I almost said your name. Um, that would have been a disaster. Oh yeah, I've now been made aware of that. But uh, I just have to ask you. You said something. There was a weird thing about his feet. Well, he would make his. He called them intern of the month. Those are whoever he was sexually involved with at the time. Right. He would pretty much make them rub his feet down. And then he had this ritual where he would put them in between someone's butt cheeks. And he called he called us his little credit card swipers. He would swipe his feet up and down, thinking that it was pleasurable for us. And he would be sitting on his side the whole time. And then he would drink a full glass of salt water, and he would go out and do his show. Wow. Did he talk about Shannon Sharp much? Like backstage? Before the show or anything? Well... He felt very threatened by Shannon Sharp. Right. That makes sense. Because obviously Shannon Sharp is a physical specimen. Yeah, he's physically, you know, better looking and in better shape. And also he's smarter and also he seems like a nicer person and also a better person. Is that why? Yeah, he had a very sharp intellect. He, he had a very good sense of humor. He would make everyone laugh, and whenever we laughed at his jokes, Skip would take it out on us sexually. Mm. He would he would pick one of us out of the crowd, and um, he would inflict what he liked to call squirrel play on us. He has a pet squirrel. I don't know if you know that. Oh, wow. But he's trained the squirrel to, what's an easy way to say this? Uh, he, he called it suppository mode. The squirrel would tuck his little arms in and shoot inside of us like a rocket. And Skip would, uh, laugh maniacally the whole time while wearing a mask of Tom Brady. Did you, were you around Ernestine, his wife, much? Ernestine doesn't exist. Wow. Are you serious? He, as I told you, he, he puts on a wig, he puts on makeup. He puts a little bit of liquid latex on his face um, to cover up the wrinkles, and he turns into Ernestine Bayless. It's it's a split personality, and when he is in Ernestine mode, as we called it, he is a force to be reckoned with. You do not want to cross him when he's in Ernestine mode. Wow, what a crazy interview that was definitely true and was not staged at all. That was amazing. Anywho, I got one last question for you guys. If you guys were friends with Skip Bayless, what do you think he would get you as a Christmas gift? His wife's book. <laughs> I know that. I know that's what he would get me. I know it is. And he'd, he'd, he'd write something inside indicating that it was personalized for me. Like, no, I didn't get you this because it's my wife's book. I got you this because you could really benefit from its content. Yeah. You know, he'd, he'd sell it to me in his inscription. I, th- I thought you were going to say, in the inscription, he would say something like, I, she's, her name's on the cover, but I did this, you know, like <laughs> just sell his wife under the bus. Like he's, like, he's like, listen, he's like, her name's on the cover, but Dak Prescott could have done a better job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> and, he, and then just at the end, PS LeBron James sucks. Also, I'm stronger than Shannon Sharp. <laughs> I can beat him in a foot race. <laughs> to Jason, I could do a six minute, 30 second mile. <laughs> Still to this Still, day, to this right day. now, do you want to race <laughs> this is really long in script uh, truly skip <laughs> i feel like if skip and i were very close super close i feel like he'd probably get me maybe a tom brady jersey signed by skip bayless <laughs> yeah, yeah oh that's good that that works as well yeah i feel like there's a number of ways you could go with that it would just be something so out of touch uh sign just a signed headshot of him or maybe just the tb12 method book <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just one of his uh, instagram photos of him shirtless but blown up <laughs> uh maybe a paintings of that or if there was a skip bayless action figure do you think he would come with the fedora <laughs> there would be a separate one for that yeah, yeah for sure be two. it would come with replaceable jordans <laughs> yeah. yeah put just put shoes on your own skip bayless <laughs> I could also see him, like we were talking about earlier, like some sort of coupon. Yeah. That would be his gift. He could go, he seems like he'd be really cheap. 
<laughs> or it's like ESPN gave me these free ESPN streaming coupons. You think with his shoe fetish, they would have figured out by now a way for him to be like a, a pitch man or an advocate for pay less shoes. It's, it's so fe- obvious. It's fetish? I don't know. It's fetish? <laughs> get, let's get pay less. That's it. That's oh wow! That, right? Oh yeah. And that, who has? How they haven't thought of that? They haven't yeah. thought of that for real. With his shoe thing going on. If the are shoe you kidding fits. me? Yes. Yeah, skip pay less. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I I didn't know where you're going with that, and I was like, yeah, you don't want Skip as the guy for your shoe store as the front mate, but for pay less, they'd be all about it. Right. It's a perfect fit. Uh, Only old people. Is pay less still a store? They're coming back for this, for this promotion. Well, I guess uh, that's our podcast, guys. Um, thanks, uh, thanks again, Mikey, for being on. Thank you, Jason, course, for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, anything you guys want to plug, Jason? Anything you want to? No, throw out there? I have not. I come by my apartment. I live on Wilshire. Come over, <laughs> hang out. I have a balcony. It's fabulous. I live across the street from Ralph's. <laughs> Mikey, anything you want to throw out there? Um, not really. No, I mean, <laughs> fo- follow me, Airs World, on Instagram. Uh, if y'all need any podcasts recorded, give me a call. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Instagram. I'm uh, fo- you should follow me. I'm Madness Everywhere Incorporated. There you go, guys. Uh, <laughs> and as always, rate, subscribe, review. You know, throw it out there. You gotta help the podcast grow. Uh, you guys, some of you guys have said some really funny shit on there. It's been a big help. You guys are the best. Thanks for doing that. And if you haven't, it takes two seconds and it goes a long way. You have no idea. So give it a shot. Throw it out there. Say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. No, as always, uh, follow me on everything at Doug Mellard. Uh, thanks for listening. See you next week.